So right now, let's try to uh, see how we can design some uh, APIs for our exercise and uh, how to implement them with, with Express. Um, the first point is, uh, okay, how do you encode the information that we need to transfer between the client and the server and back in a, a way that is compatible with the HTTP protocol that only thinks about, uh, mainly thinks about uh, text files, mainly transport text files. So the idea is that we are using, or all, we all will be using the JSON format, uh, which is a new name for something that we already know. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation which is actually a syntax for a uh, very, very simple syntax. This is the full syntax tree of JSON. That basically tells us that you can, in JSON, represent uh, numbers and strings, or true and false, okay? And you can organize these numbers and strings in arrays uh, by using square brackets, uh, or in objects uh, by using curly brackets, like, like you do normally in JavaScript. So this is a valid uh, JSON format. So this is a string, basically, it's a text file that uses the JavaScript syntax for representing one object containing one, two, three, four properties. These properties are a string as a string, an object, nested object with three properties of type string, 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 and number. And another property from number, which is a list, array, of two strings. Okay, this is what we would write normally in JavaScript with one, with two exceptions, uh, three. One exception is the name of the fields must always be quoted. In JavaScript, it's, it's optional if you have a name of a property uh, which doesn't conflict with another identifier or, or with the syntax of the language, you can drop the quotes, okay? Here, they are mandatory. The quotes must always be double quotes, so you cannot use single quotes in JSON, while in JavaScript you could, and there should not be extra commas. So in, in JavaScript, if you have an extra comma here, or an extra comma there, a dangling comma, it's allowed, it just drops, it's just ignored. Here, it will be a, a syntax error. So it's a stricter syntax over JavaScript objects. And uh, this uh, standard format gets its own uh, uh, content type, which, which is called application slash JSON. So we can transfer, with this, we can transfer complex information, arrays of objects, uh, objects of arrays, and so on, what, whatever complex object we want, uh, from the client to the server by serializing them into a text fragment uh, with a content type application JSON, both in the request and in the response. This will be the format for data exchange. From the JavaScript point of view, these are objects of the basic type. When you read this, you have all the properties, but an object in JavaScript could have methods, and you don't have methods. You cannot serialize methods. You cannot serialize functions, only data. And you don't have types. You remember that we create a method with an object with a constructor function, the object remembers the constructor function. Here, of course, if you are recreating an object from um, some string, of from JSON string, it will just be a plain object of type object instead of. The, there are these two small uh, limitations. There are two predefined methods for converting a string to an object and an object to a string using the JSON format. These are in the JavaScript standard library. Stringify takes an object and returns a string. Parse takes a string and returns an object. Hmm? All with this, uh, uh, with this syntax. So every time we need to send uh, some information to an API call to a server, we can take an object with all the information we need, stringify it, and send it. And on the receiver side, we, can, we get a string, maybe in the request body or in the response body, and we parse it, and we get, after parsing, we have an object with all the properties in JavaScript. So it's very convenient. Okay, so what was just the first problem, how to encode information. Second is how to refer to information. 
So I have an API that contains, in our example, uh, questions and answers. Uh, in this example here, in the, on the slides, we have the idea of having uh, students and courses, for example, okay? The database of the university. So we have objects of type courses and objects of type student. And uh, objects of type uh, student, can we, can, we may need to refer to a specific student or we may need to refer to a group of students. So what we are doing here is to invent a syntax based on the URL syntax, so HTTP slash something, where we don't refer to web pages, but we are using as the syntax to represent data. We don't have memory addresses. We don't have variable references. We have a string that represents some data item. And this is a convention that we will build. By convention, the list of all students uh, will be encoded uh, as a URL with a, of course, the server name, slash name of a collection, slash collection. Slash students will be the collection, the list, the array, of all students. Slash courses will be the collection of all courses that are registered in the system. We decide that whenever we need to represent uh, the list of all students, we will write slash students. That's it. It's our decision. There's nothing special. What can we do with the list of students? Two operations. Add a new one to the list or get the list. So we have a one conventional name for representing a list of objects, and then we will define some operations that apply on that name, and they will refer to that list in particular. And if I want to represent a single student, for example, I can represent it by specifying one identifier out of a collection. So a single item will also be slash collection slash identifier, always. And that's enough for representing an object. You don't need anything more. Which is the type of object you have, slash collection, and which is the individual item you have, slash ID. Hmm? And what can you do with a single item, with a single student? You can modify its property, you can delete it, you can query its properties, and so on. So again, you have, we have some, some operations, high-level operations that operate on lists, on collections. Some other operations that operate on items. Okay? And, uh, okay, these are just some suggestions. Usually, you know, it's easier to do these kind of designs if, you, if we are using uh, nouns, uh, and in the plural form. So it will read easier, but it's just a, a um, suggestion. And uh, you, you need to do some operations. And uh, since the information is encoded as URIs, the operation on these uh, pieces of information can be encoded in a uh, HTTP methods on those URIs. So we know get, put, pull, um, put, post, and so on have a specific meaning in the HTTP protocol. We are overloading this meaning. When get is applied to a list of items, to a, a URI representing a collection, we decide that the effect of calling this get method would be to return a list of objects of that collection in JSON format. When the get method is applied to a URL representing a single item, the result should be the representation in JSON of the full object representing that item. 
So get on a collection will give me the list of elements. Get on an item will give, will give me the properties of that item. We only have two types of data, collections and items. A post on a collection is a, the operation for adding one element to the collection. Post on an item doesn't make any sense, only on, for only on collection. Put is the operation for changing the property of an item. You cannot change a collection as a whole, you can change a single item. A delete will remove one element for, from a collection and so on. So we are giving a higher level semantics to these HTTP operations by mapping the semantic of, of the method into these two data types, collections and elements. Okay? So, in general, on a database, what can we do? We can create elements into a one table, we do one collection. And this, in that case, we make a post to the collection. We create a new student means uh, making a post to slash students. So we implement the method app.post slash students with a code for inserting a new student to the database. Of course, the, this post will have the response body that contains all the information about the student to be added. Um, we can get a list of items, get on the collection. We can get uh, the information about one single item and depends uh, on whether our URL is slash students or slash students slash ID and so on. Hmm? So these are the five uh, uh, high level operations that we can do on any database. And we are mapping these, these operations onto the intersection of HTTP methods and URI formats. We are still missing one ingredient before having a full database, which are relationships. Okay. These, are, these are working if students and uh, uh, courses are separate words. But then we, in a database, we'll have the relationship uh, where students is enrolled to a course and so on, and we are not able to represent it yet. Mm -hmm. But it's the next step. So for example, if we have a database managing docs, we may have the general URL docs that represents the, the list of all docs, and we can give a meaning. So we are implementing the method app.get docs that will query the database, create a list of docs, put that into an array of objects, string, um, and uh, stringify it into JSON. That will be the response. Hmm? Um, and these are the one, two, three, four, five uh, uh, operations. Hmm? Five, uh, I, I like them to be four, and to, I, I don't like delete usually, okay? I try to not implement it, don't think about that. Instead of deleting some data, it's often better to have one field, one extra property saying deleted yes or not. So the, you are not physically deleting the item, but just logic, logically marked it as deleted. But it's just a, the fear of losing data. Um, and so in this case, we are uh, implementing one, two, three, four different uh, routes in Express. One, it would be app.get slash docs, app.post slash docs, app.get slash docs slash column ID. Remember the dynamic uh, uh, URLs. Docs slash something. And this something would be the dog ID. And uh, uh, app.put dogs ID. Each of these four methods will implement a select for the list of dogs, an insert for a new dog, a select for the property of a single dog, so one line of database, and an update in the database with, for that dog with the new information. But this doesn't depend on the database anymore. 
what we are publishing as the documentation of our API is the type of resources that we have, lists and items, and the type of operation that we can do on those. We may have one database table for dogs, but maybe also the information can be structured or stored in a more complex way in the database. We don't need to have a one-to-one -one matching of our high-level resources that we are publishing the API and the database table. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is not something that we are making up here in this course. This page is, was taken, for example, from Google that gave some suggestion. So these are sort of a, a consensus about the community of developers that try to align themselves on how to design APIs by exploiting URIs, JSON, and HTTP methods. And we try to do that more or less in the same way for consistency and for ease of understanding each other's uh, uh, applications. Relationships, we left that out. Um, How to represent a relationship? Okay, first of all, we must uh, represent that two items of two different collections are linked in some way. And so what I can do here is to identify, let's put in the, in the general mind of our many-to-many -many relationship, we can identify one item of one collection and think about the collection of the items of the other group that are connected to that. As an example, students uh, would be the list of all students. Students uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, is uh, the identifier of a single student. Slash courses would be the list of courses of that student. So students 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 courses would be a collection of courses but not all the courses, just the ones that are taken by that, that student. And on the other way, courses, uh, this code here, courses is the collection of all courses. Courses slash course ID is one specific course. Slash students is the collection of students that are enrolled in that course. This is the, the way we represent that. By taking an item slash the name of a relationship type, in our mind that will represent the collection of all, of all items of that type, students, that are connected to that resource, that specific course. Usually, three levels are, should be enough for every type of complex relationship. We pick, you pick an item on one side, and you pick a relationship, and you <clears throat> get the collection of all the elements on the other side. And so you can have a, sorry, I don't have it here. Um, you could have a, a get on this URL that will give us the list of the courses for this student. You could have a post on this URL, and this would uh, add one course to the list of the courses followed by the students. That would mean enrolling. If I want to enroll students in a course, I could do a post with the course information to this URL. Or I could do the post with the student information on the second one. On the database side, it should be equivalent no? to adding a course to a student or adding a student to a course. At the end, you are adding one relationship between two items or two tables. So the operations that we can do, add, delete, uh, list, and so on, on this URLs uh, refer to the relationship to the instances of the relationship between the two, the two items no? in your classical. So these are general rules that help us to think in higher level about the operations that we want to provide on our database. Managing single items, collection of items, or relationships between groups of items, or single pairs of items. 
There's nothing here that is telling me this course is a one-to-one -one or one-to-many relationship. It depends on our implementation. This is just a, a tool for organizing our, our code. Um, and there are guidelines you know, that help us uh, to, to think in this way. We linked a couple of them here just to, uh, to have some example if you want to, to have a look. So what do we do with all this information? Let's think about uh, our example, OK? Uh, the, the, that, the, um, our application about question and answer and so on. And uh, do we, we, can, we want to provide uh, some uh, API for that database. So let's, start, let's first design it. Um, for example, Uh, let me text the, uh, the exercise is asking for defining a set of HTTP APIs for each of the needed operation on question and answer. Okay, so actually, let's go to this readme and start to implement that or to, to specify that. So, what are the operations that we need uh, to support? Okay, we, not, we, we want to create a website for handling question and answer. So the webs, the, the, all the data is stored into a server, and what, if, what operations should the server provide? So we have three types of objects, of collections of objects that are users, questions, answers, right? that they map to the table in our database. They are different types of objects. So what operations uh, should we provide on questions, for example? Quindi, on, on questions, we should uh, provide uh, the list of questions. It does have no parameters, it will give me the list of all the questions in the database. If the database is big, this operation would be quite expensive. So we need some way to filter it. But for the moment. So this operation would be a list or give me the list. The list of all questions in the database. And uh, if I want to have the detail of a single question, I have uh, get questions ID. Get, give me details. Of uh, one question with a given ID. And then I also have to specify how I represent these details. So that will be an object like uh, all the fields that a question should have. We already have, for example, we, we copied some implementation. For example, question has ID, text, email, and date. So it should represent it like uh, something like ID, three, uh, what is the text, email, and date? Text, my question. And then we have uh, email, uh, which is the user. And finally, the date uh, in some format. ID. 
So in this case, this should be the response to the get call to questions three. Three is the ID for which the, the question is solved. And uh, in the other case, in the get question, how should the answer look like? It should be a list of what? But we decide. It could be just a list of IDs. This is a minimal impact over you know, the query. You don't need to transfer a lot of data. Of course, we don't have any information. Or, of course, this is the minimum information we can give, the list of the IDs. Or we could provide uh, the full objects, a list of uh, the ID 2, uh, text my square, a list of objects with an ID. Let me write like that. Um, text, email, date. And then another object of the same type, ID, text, email, date. So this should be full objects, so with property names and values, so many objects like this. So in this case, it would dump me all the table of the database, all the rows and all the columns for every row. If I have this, uh, probably I, would I wouldn't even need the second one because I already have all of them in the first call. Or, so this would be full contents of all elements. If I don't have many, if they are not big, uh, why not? Or it could be something in between. It could be something where I only provide an object with the ID that must be there and maybe the text. And then ID, text, and so on. Or date, or whatever. A subset of the fields. Full list with a subset of the fields. It's our design, okay? We design it like we need it. Semantically, this should be a list of objects that represent all the questions. At which detail we want to represent the individual question in the, in the whole list, it's up to us. It's up to the, how we imagine the application to be run. If we need uh, to sort the question by date, uh, well, probably date should be one required field. And, uh, and so we should provide it. If we need to filter by author, probably author also should be one of the requirements or the field that we provide. Otherwise, the client should need to do a lot of many other queries, sir, give me the details of question number one, two, three, four, five. But it's a, a trade-off, a design trade-off. As long as we specify it clearly in the documentation. What is the type of object that we are returning in response to this call. A list of IDs, a list of full objects, a list of partial objects. That's it. The IDs should be there because the IDs are, are critical to get all the further information. So, get questions, get questions ID, and what other operations could I could do on the list of questions? Adding one question. Adding one question, to so add one question, would be a post operation of, on the list questions. And it must contain an object like this. So in the body, request body, 
I have uh, one new question with the text of the question. We don't provide the ID of the question because we don't know which is the next free ID. It's the database that should provide us. The server should assign an ID to us. Okay? When you go and you enroll to the secretary, you give your name and they give you back your ID number. When I create something, the identifiers is always specified by the, the centralized point of creation of the objects. And maybe we, I don't even give the date. The server knows the date, right? I don't want to be able to fake the server by saying, okay, this is a question that was asked 10, ten years ago. <laughs> You're sending me the question right now, so I will timestamp it. I don't want you to timestamp it. I don't trust you. So that's enough. We don't need the date. Go away. So we have some fields that are the required fields in the, in, the, in, the, in the representation of an object. And the server, what, what can the server do? The server will assign an ID and the time and the uh, timestamp it with the current date. And in the return, in the in the response body, I should have at least the ID that has been assigned. So when I post a question, I give you the information that you need to create a question. Some other information can be automatically derived or rather known for the server, and the server will reply probably with the, well, an error if something went wrong, or the ID corresponding to that question that has been just added. May, this is the minimum information, or maybe the UA or we decide to provide the full object ID will be 77, and then uh, we repeat the text and the mail that uh, were registered, and we also provide the date uh, since it can be computed by the server. I am returning you the full object, so only the information, the minimum information, or the full object. We decide, we document it and our caller knows what they will get in return. Oh, and so on. What other operations can we do on, uh, on a question? Well, we can uh, add an answer, or we can get the list of answers. And this is something that, uh, but on the other hand, uh, do we need uh, some get answers method? I don't think we need that. Having the full list of answers to which question? To all of them mixed all together, does it make sense? Will an application ever need that? Do we want to provide an application this information? No, I don't think so. If I want to have a list of answers, I probably have, well, we should always have the context. List of answers to that question or list of answers by that user. So maybe it could be the answers to a question, and that would be questions, ID of the question, answers. This makes sense. All the answers to, the, to, a, to a given question. It's a list. Or it could be the answers of a given person. Get my, no, so users, ID, 
in this case would be the ID of the user, answers. All the answers I gave. Okay, but let's set the users aside. So this one could provide in the input, it's basically the ID, ID of the question, which is in the URL. You, you, I don't need a, a request body for giving this information. By the way, in the get method, the request body is forbidden, so it cannot provide it in any way. But the identifier of the question is already here. And the output, uh, it, it will be in the response body, would be a list of answers, of relevant answers. Objects. So a list of objects that represent answers. And what are the fields uh, that represent answers in our model are uh, ID, text, email, score, and date. Okay, so it'll be ID, text, email, score, date, and so on. If we want to provide the list of full objects. Okay. And for adding a new answer to a given question, for adding a new answer to a given question, we have a post Questions, ID, ID, answers. So this will add a new answer to a question that we'll have in the input, in the, in the request body, we'll have an answer, the fields of an answer that are not the ID, the text, email, and that's it. The score will start from zero, it's a new answer, and the date will be determined by the server. And the ID of the question is already available there. So in this case, the implementation of this post will get the ID from the request.parameters request.param and the, the uh, text and email of the answer from the request.body request.body.email request.body.text and so with these three information we will add the, uh, a date for today and we insert the information in the database Okay, so now we go to the implementation of some of these. But the idea is that we think about which kind of operation we need to support, how to encode the, inf the information of the data on which we are operating, which details of the objects need to be provided, and which are the methods that make more sense for that kind of operation. And uh, uh, most of the methods will fall into these categories. Get one detail, get a list, a collection, and then could be a full list of a list of a relationship, for example, uh, or a post for adding, or a put for modifying, why not? And then there are some extra functionalities that don't fall nice, so nicely in this uh, uh, scheme. Like, for example, Upvoting an answer. Uh, it's a key operation. How do we implement that? So when our application, when a user in our application clicks on up and a vote, on like, on plus, uh, on an answer, because this is a good answer. So it could be implemented uh, as a put. 
because in general could we could have a modifying answer modifying answer what is that is put answers id and then in the request body we have the, the object representing the answers okay so we will modify all the fields of the answer with object with that id in general i am replacing so the id is fixed i'm replacing that row in the database with other columns on the same id update all the fields where id equal to this one speaking in sql Upvoting an answer could be something where I read and then write and then put, I could do a get for the information about an answer, increase the score and then put the updated score. Not very nice. First, because if I have two users that are trying to update the same score at the same time, I'm risking of missing an, incre an increment. Okay, because they both read some data, they increment it separately, and they store it, and it gets only incremented once. Second, because if I let the user overwrite the score of an answer, how can you prevent them from overwriting with, with a number which is 1,000 more, and not just one more than the current one? So this, if it's a key feature, I didn't want to allow uh, arbitrary modification to the score. Okay, you can correct your question, but you cannot change your score. But I need to provide you a way to increase the score, to vote the score. So I need uh, one extra operation which doesn't fall very nicely into the relationship operators. Okay, read, write, modify, read, modify, delete. Huh? And, and here we need to be a bit creative, okay? One possibility could be a, of a put, put, sorry, a post, answers, ID, vote. And, uh, Empty with an empty uh, request body. Answer, answer. Or maybe the user email who have, who have voted. Which is currently an information we don't, we don't have in the database. We don't link uh, the scores with the voter, but. Actually, it is not, it's not needed. So this is not, a, vote is not a, a real table, it's not a relationship, it's not a collection. But it looks like that. I'm adding post, one vote, to an answer. I don't need to specify the question because the idea of an answer, an answer is uniquely linked to one question. So in this case, we are, you no. Know, add an item to a virtual collection of votes, which is then mapped uh, on the database side to incrementing one field. But we need to represent it in this way. Is post the right, uh, or maybe let's say votes, maybe in plural. Is it better to have a post, or would you, would you prefer a get or a put for this operation? Well, get, uh, by definition, should never modify the database. So for modifying something, never use get. Sorry, I changed the wrong one. OK? Semantically, it's a reading operation. The writing operations are put and post. The difference is that 
post, uh, post will always add something and put will overwrite something. And so post, uh, put is idempotent, as we said before. If you repeat it twice, you get only one result. So the question is, uh, if I upvote an, an item twice, uh, does it happen twice or only once? Twice. So in this case, post is the best choice. If the operation was a star an item, give three stars, five stars, two stars, that would be a put. Because giving two stars twice doesn't result in four stars. It results in two stars with the latest overwrite operation wings. Then we can implement as we want. Okay? Uh, if, we are, if we write this operation like up.post or up.put, uh, it will work anyway. But semantically, it will be wrong. So it will be difficult for, uh, for the developers that use our API to understand what they are going to do. So that's the strength of the, of the conventions. We do that in a way that is easy for us to implement, to understand, and easy for others to use. And from the implementation point of view, we made a lot of words, but from the implementation lot of view, a point of view is very simple. We just have to map into the express uh, route these operations. Uh, if you have the, the, the array of a collection, we just map route that address and we, map, we will make people to a get for getting the list and to a post for adding one item of the collection. And then for uh, URS containing an item ID, we use parametric routes. If we have information in the body of the request, we extract it with the request.json. Uh, so expert.json that will give, will uh, populate request.body dot the different properties. And if we need to provide some uh, response back, some object in the response body, we always use uh, request.json that will serialize in JSON our object rest. We, we build an object in JavaScript with the, with the required information and then re respond to JSON that object. Could be an array, could be just a single object. If we don't need to provide any answer, request a response.end, and so on. And uh, these are some examples here, some templates, okay? So for example, get a collection, get questions. We define a route with a get collection name, and then we have, uh, imagine we have an object, uh, I call it DAO, data access object. An object that is doing the actual queries, okay? On the database. So inside this DAO object, we have all the queries. We have a method list answer, for example, that returns a promise with the list of answers. Which is the method that we implemented last week. Similar, okay? And so this promise, when this promise is fulfilled, we take the answers. That will be an array of objects, and we return it to the caller. OK, we are still missing all the error management. OK, there's a catch here, there's a test. But the basic idea is this. And if we have uh, to get one single element, the information about one single answer, so the URL will be not just answers, but answers ID. So it's a different route. So a get to answers will get here, a get to answer three will get there. And this ID will be injected automatically by express into request.parameters.id. So whatever is written here will be available in this variable, in this property here. And this property will be given to the method doing the queries they will do a select where ID equal question mark and the question mark will be populated with this ID. And then the result will be one object 
that we can return in JSON format to the caller. So it's just one line of code plus 10, line, 10 lines of uh, SQL code for doing the queries plus maybe other 10 lines for hand error handling here. This, we don't have it in this slide. But the core is just one line, okay? And if we are adding one answer, so it's a post to a collection. A post to a collection expects to have the, ob the representation of the object that we need to add into the body of the request in JSON format. So, first of all, if it's in JSON format, we must uh, register the JSON parser once and for all. And then all the fields of the answers will be in request.body. This is just copying all the objects, uh, or we can just extract a single property, request.body.id, request.body.text, depending on whether we need all of them or just some of them. And then, we just do the, do the insert. And if we need to return the ID, okay, the ID will be probably a return value of this create answer with a then and something. Oh, by the way, this is wrong because it doesn't return, doesn't close the response. So this code is wrong because there's no response.end or response.send. So this will, will, will leave the, the client uh, in timeout. I sent the answer, the request, uh, the data is being saved in the database, but the client doesn't know it. Okay, so this, uh, we must add uh, at least uh, a response.end. If I don't need to provide any result, uh, at least let's return a 200 code uh, saying, okay, the operation was complete. Or maybe, you know, as we specified in our, in our example, on a post we return maybe the ID or the full representation of the new object, depending on what you want to return. Or nothing. Hmm? Or nothing at all. So basically this is what we, the template that we have. Always start uh, from the top from the operation that you need to implement, then the URI, then the object formats that you exchange in input and output, and then you implement the methods. As an organization of the code, what we published on the, yesterday or tonight on, uh, on GitHub, uh, we already had some uh, in this folder QA server. Okay, what do we have? as a, an example of organization of the code. Of course, we have the uh, server file where is the server must be implemented. In addition, we created two files, uh, one of the models that just uh, implements the, the constructor function for the objects. We call it model because that's the representation of my objects. And uh, another file which is called DAO, data, access object that contains a list of, of uh, the connection of the data to the database and a list of methods, list question, get question, access. some of them are implemented, some not, okay. Just to you know, agree on a structure of the project. So we have one module where we define all the objects that we need, one module that defines all the data, data operator on, on the database, and then we have the web server itself, the, the API server itself. Uh, all the methods here are exported so that from our express application we can import it. So let's start uh, trying to implement some of them, okay? So I'm going to the, uh, of course here in the package.json, we already listed the dependencies, DJS and SQLite. So if you downloaded this project, uh, remember to do npm install so that it will download all the dependencies. All of them for the moment, but we need to add uh, at least Express. Hmm? So let's open a terminal and go into QA whatever server 
and uh, npm install express and then morgan i need it and in server.js or oh, yes i write uh, uh, import express from express import morgan from morgan and then we see what we need if we need it application express and then we can register on the application the usual middlers so app dot use uh, morgan uh, common for example app to use express dot json yep up the list up the listen 3000 callback And here we are, we can implement all the APIs. So let's start with a simple one, for which maybe we have the implementation of the methods from the DAO. So the DAO contains a, a get question, for example, from ID. Okay? Give me the object corresponding to selects uh, from the question where the ID is this one and it creates uh, a new object of type question, right? This is just a SQLite code, okay? What we were doing last week. So we can, uh, we decided, no? 10 minutes ago that we have one API to get all the details of a quest. So we implement it, app.get questions ID callback request response body So what is the idea of the response? Where do I get it? From the parameters. It's a parametric query. So question ID is from request.param.id. We use this to make the query to the database. So we must uh, import, we must call the method that is called, uh, where is the DAO? Uh, get question. Okay, so we must call a method called get question, which is imported, should be imported from DAO. We can use this syntax of importing so this is the module, DAO.mjs. Uh, you see the syntax, uh, dot slash, means that we are importing from our own module. While in the other cases, uh, we didn't have any path, uh, and we were importing from the node modules library. Okay, so if we specify the path, it's something in our project, otherwise it's something in the package, in the downloaded packages. Uh, this import gives me an object uh, with all the exported properties. So I could do be a destruction statement here and say, okay, we have uh, the, all the, an object that contains all the, proper, all the exported properties and we assign it to a specific variable. Another possible syntax would be this one.
okay? And then we use the method like as DAO.getQuestion. So when we import something, we are, what we receive is an object with all the properties. Properties corresponding to the export statements in the module. We can store the object in a variable and then access the properties of the object. Object dot property. Or using this syntax, this is just normal destructuring object assignment. When on the left hand side of an equal, you have a syn an object like syntax, and you have a list of variables that will be assigned from the properties of the same name. Okay? Good shortcuts in JavaScript. It's the same. Okay? Just choose. The first one is quicker, the second one is more explicit because in your code you will write DAO.getQuestion. It's your choice, okay? Let's uh, comment this as an alternative. So, getQuestion is a method that requires one parameter, if I'm not wrong, yes, an ID. Okay, so the ID would be my question ID. And it returns a promise. or not, or it fails the promise, it returns a promise uh, with the result of the data. And this will be the question object. The question object that we can, what, what do we do with the question object? Uh, we need to package that into JSON and return it to the caller. Okay, response, the JSON, Or something went wrong. In the database query, and we must return an error. So in this case, it would be an error message. And so sorry. And so we must at this point. We must, we could return um, an error message. So it could be the response, set the status code. Um, status 500. Send database error. and then we concatenate the other representation. So never, never drop an error, always return it. We could have also other forms of errors, so maybe the ID is not a, is not a number, could be a string, so we can validate it. So there could be many other reasons to reject uh, this, uh, this, uh, this API call. But this should be the minimum. And let's see if it works. We go on to the um, test of HTTP, and we try to get, sorry, it's a yes, so get HTTP localhost 3000 questions, one. Of course, we must start the server before. On port 3000, yes. Send request. I don't know why. Okay, I got this get questions one. It responded with okay, and this is the object representing question number one. So we went all the way through from our client, which in this case is just the test HTTP file. We sent a request to the server. The server understood the request, did the query in the database, got the result, put the result in the HTTP response, and here we have it. 
If I'm asking for another question, maybe 111, 11, I would get an error in this case. And the error is a question unavailable, check the inserted ID. This error message was generated by the DAO code. Because the DAO code already checked, you see? If row is undefined in the case where the ID is not valid, it creates an error message and we are transporting the error message back to the client. The only thing I need to check is why it's still 200 code. Uh, maybe it's, I did something wrong here. It's not status, but status code. And let's try again. No, okay, I need, I need to, to check it. Uh, error is the response. Okay, anyway. Okay, so this is just the one first implementation, but the idea is always the same. Now we are getting all the information from the different parts of the API interface, do the query, and return the result. It's, it tends to be boring, because more or less we always follow this template for the HTTP server and a similar template for the database operations. So the real creative part is how to define and document the interface. And the rest is just following more or less these patterns. Plus add invalidation, error handling, and so on. But you get the idea at least at the beginning. So that would be the game that you're going to play on the labs on this week, but you know that this week is a double week, so it spans across the Easter vacation. So the lab is not this Thursday, but the Thursday next week, right? Okay, thank you, and uh, see you the week after that.